Hello again, welcome back to Art371, Intro to Video Projection, Mapping, and Installation. Today we're going to play around with, again, sort of analog methods for shaping and filtering uh, the light coming out of your projector. So, one of the first things I always like to show is just a piece of paper with a shape cut out of it, right? So, as you can see right now, we have projection going on on the back wall there, and you can see that just fine. I want you to see what happens to that shape when I start to filter it. All right, so here we go. Here's that sheet of paper. Now watch what happens. You can kind of begin to manually mask where that starts. If I get closer, it gets kind of fuzzy. If I get out, I might need a bigger piece of paper depending on how far the throw is. But fairly impressive that I can kind of create my own you know, very much stolen from theater and, and film, you can create your own kind of masking this way, which is really great. So you could set your projector up on, say, like a little platform and have this set it up, set up on a piece of paper, or a piece of cardboard, foam core, anything really, and you can move these in and out to make a different shape to your projection. And just so you can see what I'm doing over here, this is all I'm doing is kind of putting this out in front of the projector and hovering it in the position that I want. So very manual, very analog, but a very effective way to do it. Now I could also just take a shape like this, a piece of foam core and an X-Acto blade. And as you can see here, we have a nice cutting table set up. Move this fabric out of the way. And say I want to cut a little shape. So I'm just going to make sort of like that. A little eyeball shape. Let the blade do the work. So now I have a little eyeball shape. Again, watch this. There we go. Now I have just created a manual mask where all you can see is the video coming through that port. And that blocks more of the light because it's kind of a thicker piece of material. And just so you can see what I'm doing. Again, I'm just blocking the light and only allowing part of the video to come through. And I can even move this around in some fun ways, right? You know, Sometimes I'll have like a full projection and then I'll just do this sort of like shadow puppetry work and have an object move around as a little transition scene and then boom, we're right back to full video again. Now, last case scenario. Uh, say you wanna do something permanent, you don't have the foam core, but you do happen to have a handy roll of blue painter's tape Without putting this on the glass lens itself, I'll often take like a bigger piece and get it on the body of the projector. You can sort of start to do some manual masking this way. Like as I bring this in, sometimes you just need to soften an edge a little bit. I'm actually gonna do this off the table so it hovers out in front of the screen a little bit. It's not quite enough. There we go. It's starting to fade that side a little bit. And sometimes you need more than one layer, right? Again, do not put tape right onto the lens or you're going to leave gunky. It might even like melt onto it. It's pretty good. I'm going to try to create one in this direction as well. And in a second, just so you can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm softening the edges because sometimes you just want to fade those edges in a little bit, right? So you kind of only see imagery. Let me go back to that. That way you only see imagery in the area you want to see and you can have other areas kind of fade out a little bit. See how that's sort of making kind of a gradiated little space just in the middle and the edges are getting softer so you don't see that hard box around the edges. Now this one's going to take a couple layers. You can always add more layers of tape to create a slightly softer seam. Let me take that back to a video here. So now we have it sort of like fading off around the edges a little bit. And as I said, the way I did that 
is creating this little kind of soft mask. There's really only an open zone right in the center. So it's a delicate art. Often I'll either use blue painter's tape or if I have, have access to black gaffer's tape, that's a little thicker and heavier duty. It doesn't take as many layers. But when I'm done, just that easy. So this is this has come in as a pinch since the time I first started playing with projectors. You're going to learn all sorts of fancier mapping tools using software, but while we're in this analog part of the class, I always like to show it because sometimes you just need a quick fix to kind of like smooth off an edge and the mapping isn't working out right, and a little piece of tape across the right zone of the projection does the trick, and it's something you can leave up there. All right, so let's take a look at filters now. So I have some fun stuff to filter with as well. Here's a piece of semi kind of iridescent colored glass. Watch what happens when I put this in front of the lens. So let's go back here. Now I'm going to go with this black and white optical illusion pattern. Let's see how long that is. Oh, bear with me. I'm going to go back. I had a little pattern video I was playing earlier. There it is. No. So watch what happens when I bring this in front. You can totally mute or shift the colors of things depending on the filter that you're working with. There we go, a nice bright image. Obviously blurred it a little bit as well. Here's one where I have a much larger piece of blue glass, so you can see. This one kind of like a fun ghostly effect. If I bring it out more, I can get more definition from the glass. Again, really mutes it, but does some interesting experimentation. Here's what happens when we put a tumbler glass and that thicker piece of glass in the bottom in front of the lens. You really get this kind of like interesting warping glass effect, almost like a 1960s kind of like psychedelic feel to it. I don't have one here, but you can use a mirror as well to bounce light around the space. We'll talk more kind of official ways of how to bounce uh, imagery using specific types of mirrors in the future. But I do have this little interesting guy. It's sort of like a prism-like piece of glass. Watch what happens here in the space when we start playing with this in front of the light. So I can warp it, but I'm also getting like multiple reflections on the ceiling. If I look down, you can actually see, I'll get some stuff on the floor here in a second, I think. You know, keep it up on the ceiling. There we go. So you can see how my I'm warping and bending the glass in some interesting ways. And almost mirror like sending them around the room. Which is kind of fun. If I flip it around, I get a different effect. I'm almost like stretching it across the ceiling now. And now it's going across the floor. If you want to see down here. There you go. And just so you can kind of see what I'm doing over here, all I'm doing is holding this piece of glass in front of the lens and working it back and forth. And I have a couple of these. I'll leave them out again near the projector if you guys want to play with them. I've got kind of a short one with this tape on it and a long one. I'll leave them top up, on top of the projector. Last but not least, I have this little box that a student of mine actually laser etched out of plexiglass. You can actually see it'll actually almost catch an image on it, which is kind of cool. But if I put this in the way of the projection, you can actually start to like get some imagery to appear with it too, which is kind of cool. So if I play around with this, getting it earlier, I don't know, maybe I, I don't know if you can quite see that in the recording or not. But I was actually getting the silhouette of the person kind of showing up inside of it. So again, I can get some interesting reflections off of it, some filters off of it, and get some different imagery to kind of show up through the projections or through the material itself, depending on what's like engraved on it or etched on it. So my camera is not doing a very good job of capturing that. But again, sometimes you can just play around with etched glass or engraved plexiglass, things like that, and you know, get some, some fun kind of light refractions happening or catching on the three-dimensional surface. So 
have some fun. Again, we're in this kind of like analog stage of this class. We're just kind of playing around with different surfaces to project on, learning your projector, learning how to filter the light, play with the light. Uh, if you have like a tinted glass or something like that, or a uh, piece of like cellophane, you can use that sometimes to change the colors. There's a lot of different ways to play. So just have some fun, experiment, get to know that projector and just warp that light and play with that light to your heart's content. All right, that's it for now. Thanks for tuning in.